Hello and welcome to In The Loop Wollongong. I'm Nathan. And I'm Natasha and this month I got to go in a hot air balloon. It was so exciting. Did we film any other segments this month or is the next half hour just going to be you trying to navigate around the world in 80 days to win a bet? I don't know Nathan, honestly. I'm pretty sure our teleprompter friend is going to tell us exactly what's coming up. Oh look, you're right. Coming up on the show this month, i98fm's Ryan Cram sits down for a meal with Steamers Bar and Grill executive chef Paul Hamilton. Our inner child and actual child correspondents Hannah and Abby head into the city to the Builder Bay Workshop experience at Wollongong Central. Returning Illawarra Hawks coach Rob Beveridge sits down with the Illawarra Mercury's Greg Ellis. We chat with Bright Mind and director of the Early Start Institute, Tony Oakley. But now I head into the sky on a romantic hot air balloon ride with the Lunar Loft. This segment is brought to you by Destination Wollongong and Internetrix. So I'm not usually the one for adventure sports, but you can probably already tell what I'm doing here in Camden this morning in six degree weather by the sound and what's behind me. We're about to float up into the sky with the loon aloft and I've heard it's quite romantic. So um, I've dragged my boyfriend along. Typical job? Yeah, uh, my dad is a pilot. Okay. So yeah, I did my first balloon ride. I was three years old. Wow. So then I just follow him, and that's it. It's yeah. a bit of a passion. Yes, of course. <laughs> More passion than a real job. You know? So how are you steering it? Uh, so as I said, just by choosing my altitude because the wind direction is changing with the altitude. Yeah. So if I stay low. I will go that way. If I go a bit higher, I will go that direction. And the idea is to reach Camden Airport, which is under the fall of the first thing. And how many people can fit in one of these baskets? I mean, there's uh, a few so of us this morning. So this one is full, 10, yeah. 10 passengers. And then if you want to carry more people, we have some bigger balloon and so bigger baskets. So the biggest we have can carry 24 passengers. Wow. Yeah, this balloon can lift uh, nearly two tons, and the biggest one can lift nearly four tons. So there's no denying this is very, very romantic. There's obviously a lot of men that get the urge to bend one knee and pop the question. Oh yes, it happened yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah, we got a proposal. <laughs> yeah, it's very romantic. And we have some banners. We, it's written, will you marry me? Oh, wow. So then I just tell to my crew, go to this place, and I'm just flying over the banner. And yeah. Boys, it doesn't get more romantic than this, I'll tell you what. <laughs> hey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, that was the most amazing way to start the day. It was absolutely breathtaking, picturesque views. We're kind of a little bit speechless about the whole thing. Loved it? Just a beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Caught the love bug a little bit? Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. So if you want to experience this amazing adventure, all you have to do is head online and enjoy the ride. That looked amazing. And Aaron was a good sport. He was, but he didn't get the hint. He didn't drop down. Oh no, he'll do it one day. This is where I am, marriage material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Balloon Aloft are giving away a voucher, including breakfast valued at $299. To win, all you have to do is share the episode or segment on your social media and let us know in the comments why you want to float away. And now Cremie heads to the Steamers Bar and Grill to taste what they have to offer.
Hey, it's Crammy from i98FM, and today I'm here at the fairly newish Steamers Bar and Grill at City Beach. Now, today we're going to sit down and enjoy a meal with executive chef Paul Hamilton. We're going to talk to him about his focus on fresh produce and, most importantly, get a taste of the delicious food. All right, well, the food has arrived. Paul, can you run us through? just some of the samples that you've provided for us today. Absolutely, Crammy. I mean, here, this is our wood-fired uh, calamari with um, aioli and a chilli jam. We marinate it in um, chilli and garlic. We've got our king local prawns, which are wood-fired again with uh, garlic and um, paprika chips. One of my favourites over there is the cracked pepper angel hair pasta with blue swimmer crab and finished with wood-fired scampi. Yes. And then we've got uh, ocean trout with angel hair pasta again soft shell crab which is done crispy with asparagus and a uh, preserved lemon salsa and then the overall favorite oh the ob organic aged 28 days which we do ourselves um scotch filling which one would you like to start with first definitely the calamari the calamari yeah. would you like me to serve you or you serve no me? i'll serve you if okay. you let me you actually source all a lot of your food that you use here locally from Jamboree? Yes, from Jamboree. We have the farm out there, which we um, uh, we grow a lot of our produce ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the chili flowers, the asparagus, the tomatoes, the cucumber, the potatoes, everything, as much as we possibly can, we grow there. Okay. The boys out there do a fantastic job of just supplying me every week with amounts of produce. That is incredibly tender. It's very tender. I did not know how you do it. Because there's so many times I cook calamari and it doesn't end up like that. It ends up rubbery. What's the secret? Come on, tell me. I can't tell you. It's a no, secret. No, come on, Paul. No, seriously, it's a secret. Okay. Just give me one. Give me one. Milk. Milk. Milk and lime juice. So we're going to try the prawns next. This is one of my favourite favourites. So these are the uh, garlic fries, which are grown on the farm. The potatoes are. Okay. But please try, try this. Oh, that's amazing as well. Yeah. Together, the garlic makes it really more, so you know, the, yeah. having a beer with it is the most perfect thing. It's funny you should say beer. Yeah. Oh, there we go, hello. <laughs> Magic happens. Sir. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's fantastic, you know, especially on a Saturday, Sunday, beautiful hot day. You just play to these and you just uh, pick away at them and, you know, use that's your right. fingers and get involved. I actually don't know what looks better, the food on the table or the, the view that we've got here at Steamers. Oh, it's, it's sensational. It is, right. And I think it adds to the uh, experience, of course, of eating, right? Absolutely. And so there's some crab in here you mentioned before? Yes, blue swimmer crab, chilli, garlic, olive oil, and you get to have the piece of scampi as well. I'm assuming a lot of the seafood comes from right yeah, out here? Yeah, absolutely right, right out here there. The, the, boy, the boys over there in the trawlers, mm -hmm. um, I get as much as I possibly can from them um, so that, uh, you know, we keep it as fresh and local as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, we pride ourselves at, you know, we're, we're sea to plate, mm -hmm. paddock to plate, farm to plate, hens to plate, everything, yeah. I only just hit that prawn in that dish and it just melted in my mouth, yeah. like disappeared. It's literally touched my teeth and just disappeared. I don't know what you did to that prawn, but it's just, it's it's all about the wood firing and how, okay. how it's cooked. It, you, you know, when you when you when you cook uh, seafood, you know, when it hits a high heat, it gets as tight as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. Now, this the heat on the uh, the wood uh, fire is just so intense it sort of reverses that a little bit as well so you, you, you even though it's such an intense heat it keeps it succulent at the it, same time because it, it's past that heat. yeah that's right it sort of um cr puts a crust on, yeah. on it and keeps all the moisture yeah, it keeps within the moisture in so you don't lose it and it, it's just a fantastic you know the seafood's so fresh cooking on it it's just oh that as well been sitting here waiting for this delicious steak. I've been staring at it. It's been looking at me back. I think there's like a love connection between me and this steak at the moment. So uh, without any further ado, Paul, can you please serve up what looks to be an amazing scotch fillet, is it? Yes, it is. It'd be my pleasure to. Oh, yeah. Don't be, sc don't be scared of the fat in a scotch fillet either. That's where all the flavour comes from in the scotch fillet. And it melts and that's what yep. gives it that flavour. Yeah. Now we've got a choice of bits and pieces to go with it. We've got a pearl onion jus. Ooh. And we've got horseradish cream and chimichurri. Well, and then, I'm... of course, you know, the lovely fries. The beer-battered fries, yes. of course, you've got to have them. And uh, we put parsnip shavings with it as well. Now, this is aged steak you mentioned earlier? Yep, aged for 28 days. Um, it's uh, dry aged. We do that ourselves. It uh, comes, comes to us in whole pieces and we butcher it ourselves. But we dry age it for 28 days first. And it's just so flavoursome. It is 
Well, everything's been delicious. Yeah, thank you very much. It has been amazing. Every plate's been sort of perfectly balanced. Yeah. Great mixture of flavours, textures. Great. This steak's incredible. I'm going to be back for this steak, let me tell you. Fantastic, thank you. Now, I probably should, should mention that we've been enjoying what is your luncheon uh, dinner menu. Yes. But you guys also do breakfast here at Steamers as well. Yeah, we do do breakfast. Uh, we're open to Friday, Saturday and Sundays at the moment. And um, it is the funkiest uh, breakfast menu in town. Um, you know, what quinoa porridge, acai bowls. Um, and then we, you know, we have uh, wild pork sausages. I saw some buckwheat pancakes there as well. They are pretty funky indeed, with cashew cream. Oh yeah. And so yeah, so yeah, we do some funky stuff. All right, I'm yeah. definitely going to be uh, maybe here for lunch, dinner, and then the breakfast tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> Fantastic. You're going to sleep in the back. Mm. <laughs> Well, um, Paul, I just got to say thank you so much for having us down here in what is just an incredible, incredible new venture in what I believe is the most amazing outlook here in Wollongong, that is Steamers. Uh, open for breakfast on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. And lunch and dinner seven days? Seven days. All right. Until come, late. come down and try the menu. This was just a sample of what is an incredible menu. And as you saw, the food is just an amazing combination of food, uh, sorry, flavours, textures. Uh, yeah, so Paul, thanks so much. No, Cremie, thanks for coming down, man. It's my pleasure to have you. I'm going to stick around and probably finish off that Scotch oh, I fillet. I certainly hope And you. probably go for another beer, I reckon. We'll make sure that happens. Come and check it out. Steamers, down at City Beach. Steamers Bar & Grill are giving away a $100 voucher. To win, share the episode or segment on your social media and let us know in the comments who you'll be treating to a meal at Steamers Bar & Grill. Next up, Hannah and Abby are back again. They're off into the city to check out the Build-A-Bear workshop experience at Wollongong Central. This segment is made possible by Wollongong Central. Discover the city. Hi, it's Hannah. And Abby. Oh, sorry, Abs. Do you want to do the intro? Yep. <laughs> I'm here with Hannah at Wollongong Central to make some bears at the Build-A-Bear Workshop. That pretty much covers it. Build-A-Bear Workshop have stores all over Australia where you can make your very own best friend. Build-A-Bear will be at Wollongong Central from the 25th to the 29th of September. So which bear do you want, Abby? This. <laughs> Well now, we've got our bears, we're going to go to the huff ceremony. Yes, we do. Our teddies are hungry, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Alright. <laughs> so what do we do? Stuffing. Grab some stuffing out of our box. Yeah. Oh. And we're going to stuff it in the back of our teddy bears. Oh. Good job. Oh. Yeah, so we've got an I love you. <laughs> and then we've got our six in one. So this one says six in one. Oh, what's your name? Okay, what? Awesome. Alrighty. And we've got our two different scents. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a bear as a kid? I can't believe 
just bring that up? Her name was Ollie. She was taken away from me when I was five from Santa in exchange for a baby born that I never used. It was devastating. Okay, well that was unnecessarily dramatic. Next up, the Mercury's Greg Ellis sits down with the Illawarra Hawks head coach Rob Beveridge to talk about his career, moving to Wollongong and this year's Hawks team. This segment is brought to you by Access Law Group and the Illawarra Mercury. Hi, Greg Ellis from the Illawarra Mercury and today on the People of Wollongong we're talking to Illawarra Hawks coach Rob Beveridge. Rob, thanks for joining us Absolute today. Absolute pleasure to be here. Pretty exciting time. I think the season starts on October 6th, so uh, very close. And we're going to talk about the new players and uh, the returning players in a little while. But first of all, we want to get to know Rob Beveridge a little bit. Uh, where were you born and grew up? Uh, Canberra. Born and bred in Canberra and uh, very proud of it. Uh, we, we're saying that I've lived in lots of different places um, over, over the many years uh, in my journey as a coach. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I grew up playing basketball and soccer. Uh, I was a pretty handy soccer player. I was okay at basketball as well, and uh, I had to make a decision of which way I was going to go because uh, I was doing both rep programs at once, and uh, I made a decision that I want to go down the basketball side of things, and probably purely because of how cold it was in Canberra. Uh, indoor sport, uh, and uh, I made a decision. I went down the basketball path, and I played. Uh, State level, uh, under 14s, under 16s, under 18s, under 20s. Uh, played, you know, represented ACT at the, the Nationals for all those years. But I think I was realistic that I wasn't ever going to be a professional player. Uh, but I was actually smarter than most players in the team. And, uh, you know, I was a role player, I was a bench player. Uh, and, that, and I think that really helped me to understand uh, a lot more about the game. And uh, I wanted to be in the sport for a long period of time, so I took up coaching. You must love Wollongong because I know here not long ago you were approached by a number of clubs to, uh, to make the move again, but your family is all here now. Initially yep. they didn't come across from Perth, did they? But, um, and your, co your son is very keen to follow in your footsteps, I understand. Yeah, it's one of those things that um, I had an affiliation with Wollongong because over the years and, and uh, yeah, Gordy McLeod was like a mentor as well. And uh, when he made that decision that he was moving on, uh, the club was in a it was in a real tough situation at the time, and uh, yeah, I just felt that I, I needed this challenge, I, and I didn't want the club to fold. And uh, when when I was approached mm. to do it, uh, it excited me. You know, the, this this club is the oldest club in Australia. You know, it's 40 years this year. Uh, we're the only foundation club still going uh, all the way through, and uh, it's had a lot of hardship and. And uh, I just wanted to be part of, of I know it's a, an incredible community uh, that, you know, three or four times the club's been on its knees and it still survives. It just continues to, to bounce back. And a lot of that is to do with the, 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 the people in the community, the, the small sponsors, the people that put their hand up and say they want to help uh, this. So it was quite easy for me at the time uh, when they approached me, oh, no, I don't want to do it. But then I sat back and thought, I said, yeah, I really want to do this. Mm. Uh, you know, it's a great challenge to try and be part of rebuilding a club. You've got a couple of new imports. Can you tell us about those and uh, who yeah. they are and what yeah. they do? We, yeah. we, we came real close last year. You know, there was a whole lot of expectations we were going to come last. We've been tipped to come last the last couple of years. And for us to uh, make a semi-final in the, the, the first year I was here and then a grand final last year, um, we, we, we weren't, we're not satisfied. We, we're just not content with doing that, we, we want to win this thing. And we felt that we need a couple of pieces to the puzzle that can hopefully get us over the line. And so we retained nine players, and it's the most out of any team in the league. But I felt we needed a couple of imports with uh, a little bit older, a little bit more mature, and, and have been around the league a lot longer. Came across uh, Demetrius Conga, um, who ticks all the boxes I was after. I'm looking for a, a long athletic wing, uh, that can score, can defend, can rebound, and that's what he does. Uh, you know, people say, oh, what, what is he? And he, he's just a great player. And then the, the other guy, uh, you know, Delvin Johnson, uh, came across him, looked at the tape, and doing all the research on him, and uh, found out that he played with Rodney Clark in college at Arkansas. So it, straight away, he was going, okay, well, it's the best way to get a character check is somebody that played with him. Mm. And I rang Rodney up and said, talk to me about our DJ, we call him, and, and loved him straight away. You know, he said, no, he's, he's, a, he's a role player. 
you know, he's not a, he's not going to be your, your superstar because we, we've got those positions filled. You know, we've got AJ in the middle. He's the best big in the league. So we don't need to have a superstar coming in. And uh, he's big, he's strong, he defends, he rebounds, very smart. You know, he's, he does all the little things that you can't really stat. So somebody looks, oh, yeah, he only got five points or five rebounds, whatever it might be. But he sets 20, 30 screens for Rodney Clark to get open. You know, he does all those little blue-collar stuff, and, and that's what I love about the guy. And, and uh, probably one of his strengths is, is how smart he is and what a great guy and how he fits in. So mm. we've got uh, some two quality guys coming into the team. And what I love about the team is how much they love the gong as well. And Oscar's a yep. father and uh, he's committed to the region yep. and everything else. And the players are like that, aren't they? They actually yep. love living in the city and representing yep. the Wollongong. It's, it's special. Yeah. You know, the, the people come here uh, and they, they never leave. Yeah. You, know, you look back at you know, the Matt Campbells and the Glenn Savills that came as juniors. Well, they're, they're here forever. Still here. <laughs> now they're still here. Yeah. And that's the same with Oscar and Reese and... Mm. And Timmy Conrad, they're, they're our longest serving players at the moment. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not going anywhere. Mm. And this, this is their hometown. They love it. And yeah. they've got families now. And this is where they want to be. Now, October 22 is the first home game, I think. So uh, there's a few games before you actually get to the first home game. But I guess uh, you'd encourage everyone to come along for that first home game and really get behind the team. Yeah, we, we've got a real tough start to the season. We've got nine out of our 12 on the road. Yeah, you know, so we, we our backs are against the wall. We know that, so it's so important that that when we start back here on the 22nd of October, we, we, we need we need support. This league is as good as I've ever seen ever. It's going to be tough for us, and we need the help of our community and the fans to fill that stadium to be that sixth man that a lot of other clubs have. Fantastic, Rob Beveridge. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we catch up with bright mind Tony Oakley from UAW's Early Start Institute to learn about how his and the Institute's research is helping improve the lives and education outcomes of children. This segment is made possible by University of Wollongong. My name is Professor Tony Oakley. I'm the Director of Research for Early Start. Early Start which is one of the major entities of the university with a focus on research, education and community among children aged birth to 10 and those who care for and work with them. What drives me is a passion for seeing every child uh, reach their potential, for equipping those who work with and care for children, parents, educators and others, to be able to provide environments that are rich, that uh, have quality interactions and that result in children um, reaching their potential. We know the importance of the early years of their life in setting up trajectories that really do have an impact on the life course. Uh, whether it be health, whether it be education, whether it be uh, social development. Uh, we know that the early years are absolutely critical in laying that foundation. Uh, we also know the importance of quality environments, both home environments, uh, early childhood education and care environments, to uh, the contribution that they make to that trajectory. So we have people that are looking at uh, particularly early self-regulation and executive function, which are those sort of higher order cognitive skills, which are responsible for processes that, that govern a lot of underlying uh, cognition. Uh, we have those that look particularly at interactions, those that look at the, the quality of the environments in which children spend time. And my own research in particular is focused on uh, the physical development. So the, mo the motor skills of children, their, their gross motor skills and their physical activity and the amount of time they spend sitting or being sedentary, engaged with screens uh, and, and, and their sleep as well. We work with 41 uh, early childhood education and care centres throughout New South Wales and we work in conjunction with them to try and improve outcomes for their children and try and upskill those that work with them. Uh, how we do that is through what we call a responsive research model. So we would uh, look to collect evidence or data on the, uh, on the children who attend that centre, on the quality of the environments, and uh, then from that, present that data back to those people, those centres, with them, uh, enter into a conversation around what might be some identified areas that they might like to prioritise or focus on to address some of what the, the data is showing them, and then we work to support them in how they might do that. It's only early days, so we've only really been going at this for a couple of years. So the stage that we're at at the moment is that we've collected a lot of that data, we've worked with the centres to feed it back to them, and we've begun that, uh, that, that sort of narrative with them around uh, how we might go about improving child outcomes, working together or in partnership. That's been very well received. 
So this is our second conference uh, this year, building on the inaugural successful one we had in 2015. Uh, we've got around 350 delegates coming from uh, throughout Australia and internationally as well. Uh, it has a particular focus again on transforming lives, on improving the, uh, the skills uh, of those who work with and care for children. We have a number of uh, very high profile uh, invited speakers and we have uh, also free communication sessions as well. And it's an opportunity particularly for practitioners and for researchers to come together with a particular focus on how do we improve the lives of young children. We've got some very uh, bold aspirations for Early Start. Obviously what you see behind you, the Early Start Discovery Space, uh, it's the only one of its kind in the world that's located on the university campus, a children's museum, but it's an interactive museum. It's why we call it a discovery space. So we have some wonderful opportunities here to be the leading organisation in play-based research. So using the wonderful facilities, the environment that we have here, the fact that we've got the public coming into a university space. So I'd love to see us having a world-leading program of play-based research. Obviously with the communities that we work with, we want to not only transform what's happening or work with uh, the settings to transform what's happening within the early childhood settings, but the whole community. So how do we bring to communities together uh, around a child, around delivering better outcomes for children, particularly in those vulnerable communities where we know children, even from a very young age, they start behind and the gap just gets bigger. So how do we actually address that early on? And now, it's prize time! Sammy Stevenson <laughs> is the winner of the two growlers, Cooler Bag and Glasses, thanks to Five Barrel Brewing and Binary Beer. Linda Fury will be treating not one, but five of her friends to a wine tour of the South Coast with Foodscape Tours. So exciting, amazing stuff. Congrats, guys. Shelley Gazavoda is the winner of a guided beach fishing tour and a Shimano Rod and Reel, thanks to Guided Beach Fishing Illawarra and Leisure Coast Bait and Tackle. Good luck. Congrats guys, and that's our show for this month. If you enjoyed the show, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or sharing the show on your social media. If you want to know more about any of this month's stories, you can find links in the show notes below. In the Loop Wollongong is possible because of the support of our awesome partners, including our media partner, i98FM. We love that breakfast banner. Are made possible by partners. Wollongong Central, discover the city. The University of Wollongong stands for purpose. Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Destination Wollongong, congrats on getting Wigan Warriors to come out to play. Access Law Group, resolution is our solution. Kazen Business and Financial. Lancaster Law and Mediation. Illawarra Mercury. Internet Tricks. Relativity, do you know that they do live streaming? They do. They do. <laughs> and our promotional partners, who you can see here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time on In The Loop Wollongong. Bye. Build a bear to the Build a Bear workshop. <laughs>